Hello, this is Asher Kadun from Pulse Secure Technical Marketing with another quick access series video. And today we're going to look at always on VPN and some related technologies. So what is always on VPN and why do you need it? So always on VPN is the ability to uh, configure the client on the uh, desktops or laptops to connect to VPN as soon as the, there's uh, any internet. And the reason why uh, you would want to do this is because most organizations on-prem, they have a security stack. So this is on-prem, uh, this is usually uh, their gateway, and then they have a firewall, but they have their own stack here. So as part of their security stack, they do things like um, they look through content, they have acceptable use policy that says uh, your traffic can go to one place, but other services or other websites are blocked. Uh, they can do uh, web security, email filtering, things like that. So most of that is usually uh, on-prem and all the traffic from internal laptops, um, all of this traffic will actually be routed through their security stack and then out the gateway, out the firewall, and then to uh, any cloud services or any other websites. So typically what happens is um, highly regulated industries like financial, federal, they want to make sure that everything goes to the stack. So when somebody is outside, they're um, out here, they're on a mobile device, they're on a laptop, what they typically want to happen is they want this traffic to come through, go through the stack, and then go out if it needs to. If there are any protected resources internal, again, they want the traffic to come in and go through and go out. So typically for uh, corporate owned devices, they can enforce this always on VPN. So that the behavior is very similar to if you're on-prem. Um, there are organizations where we hear that part of their BYOD policy for you to bring your own device and use it, they want to enforce these things. So what are some of the ways that this is done? So the first thing that needs to happen is location awareness. When these devices are internal, there's really no need for them to connect to VPN because they're already on the Wi-Fi, they're already on the uh, wired infrastructure, and that traffic is all routed through their security stack. When you're off-prem, as soon as the device tries to connect, we want to get that um, connection up. So there's a few different ways to do it. One is you just uh, remove the ability to click the disconnect button, or you remove the ability to stop the software, kill the process, things like that. There are various ways to do it across uh, Windows and iOS, or Windows and Mac OS, um, but those are the types of things that happen. The other thing that uh, needs to be done is we need to be able to understand what interfaces are being used. Typically, there's multiple interfaces. You can have your wired, you can have a wireless, you can have a USB to Ethernet uh, adapter. So all of those, we need to make sure that uh, the end user is not actually connecting different interfaces or trying different interfaces and traffic is going that way. So the client needs to be intelligent enough to understand what kind of uh, network interfaces are there. Uh, we also have a few other options. So one of the options is, let's say we want always on VPN uh, to be completely locked down. That means traffic never leaves this device. So there's a feature that we have called lockdown mode. And what lockdown mode gives you is the option to disallow any traffic to leave the uh, device. And if that's the case, one of the questions we always get is, what about captive portals? So a captive portal, let's say you're at a Starbucks or a hotel, and uh, you, know, you think, well, we locked down this device, uh, but for me to actually get to the gateway, to get to Pulse Connect Secure, I need to first get on the internet so that I can actually get there. That's the first connection that needs to be established. So uh, the Pulse client on the desktop is uh, captive portal aware means it knows right away when you try to connect that, hey, there's a captive portal. Maybe I get redirected uh, to Starbucks and Starbucks has a little checkbox I have to click and then say connect. Uh, or 
sometimes in a hotel, they'll ask you for your room and then uh, last name and then connect. So these are kind of a couple of examples of uh, captive portals. So what you would do is the client is smart enough to let this happen. So things like uh, DHCP might be allowed, DNS lookups are allowed. So once that captive portal connection is happening, you hit connect, you hit connect here. Then um, the ability to actually go to the gateway and establish a tunnel is allowed. And then all the traffic gets uh, pushed through the interface. So in some cases, the enterprise wants to uh, keep this always on, but there are some websites that they really don't care about. Let's say uh, things like YouTube. There's nothing, there's nothing that the business cares about uh, in terms of YouTube. So what they can do is they can do uh, split tunneling. And typically split tunneling is done on IP addresses. But what we've introduced is a uh, domain name split tunneling. So instead of, so instead of having to go and list out the, in some cases, dozens of IP addresses that will resolve to YouTube since they do a lot of load balancing. All you have to do is enter YouTube.com and then the client is smart enough to go and resolve all those names and make sure that any one of those names um, that resolves to YouTube or any one of those IP addresses that will do the split tunneling, which means instead of forcing all of the traffic to go back on-prem and then get through web security, we can be very um, strategic of how we want to do that and allow some traffic to go directly uh, to the source. So that's always on VPN. Um, there's been uh, some functionality that was introduced in 8.3 R1 of Connect Secure uh, and also the 5.3 R1 of the client. For more information, please visit www.pulsesecure.net to learn more. Thank you.